Hey, good morning, and welcome to 3D Vision Technologies Monthly 10-4 Tech Talk, a monthly review of technology that can make you better, faster, and smarter. This is our fifth event so far this year. Many of our customers attend our Tech Talks to learn new insights to products they already have or find newer technology that can shorten the time to complete projects. I'm Todd Majewski, your host for today's event. Today's topic is Design Better, Faster, Smarter with SolidWorks Simulation. Our presenter is Robert Warren, CAE Technical Specialist for 3D Vision Technologies. Robert, you're also an elite application engineer, isn't that correct? Yes, you're correct, Todd, and that's actually the highest uh, certification that SolidWorks offers worldwide. Robert, you have worked with 3D Vision for over eight years, and prior to that, you were working at a manufacturing company in Northeast Ohio using simulation tools as part of your design process. Can you tell us a little more on this? Yes, uh, so one of my positions was in, a, in analysis and design engineer for a transportation company. Through using simulation on a daily basis, I was able to reduce the weight out of a trailer, roughly 300 pounds, and while doing this, I was able to maintain the structural integrity with simulation. What this did was offer the customer a trailer that could haul more product, as well as it saved the company tens of thousands of dollars over the course of the year. That's fantastic. Well, today, Robert will be showing Simulation Standard, a recent bundling of simulation tools that was packaged for customers that need access to simulation at an affordable price point. So Robert, why don't you start the presentation and show us what this is all about? Okay, thank you, Todd. So let's go ahead and get started today. And what I wanna to present to you is how can we help your company be better, faster, and smarter? So we're going to look at how can we do a faster product development for you rather than generating a, a component and physically testing it with sandbags. How can we make, give you smarter insight into your design, basically the response of the system due to different loading conditions? And how can we give you a better understanding of the longevity, right? Is it going to last? Are you going to be able to meet your warranty specifications? So some of the common design concerns uh, that an engineer or designer face are stress displacement of the system, the factor safety, right? Are we meeting the internal factor safety for the product? We, have, we want to gain design insight. Is the load transferring through the system how we would expect it to? Can we optimize the design? Can we make it lighter but keep the st uh, same strength? Take cost out of that. And then how long will it, will it last? So the case study that we have for today uh, is this trunnion. It's held on both ends on the solid pins. I'm going to apply a 5,000 pound vertical load on this. And again, some of those common requirements, right? I have to keep my stress below a certain value. In this case, it's 25,000 PSI. I also need to meet that internal factor of safety, which is 2.0 uh, or higher. So let's go ahead and jump into SolidWorks and take a look at how, how we can address these, these options. So when you have simulation uh, within the SolidWorks suite, it's simply just an add-in that you're used to. And what it does is it gives you a new tab on your command manager. And at that point, I'm just simply going to start a new study. Now, what comes with simulation standard is the static linear analysis, as well as the fatigue analysis option. So you're going to be able to tell uh, life cycle. So I'm just going to label my uh, study here and go ahead and start it. What you see is it adds a tab at the bottom of the screen. This is just like Excel, so it's something that you're already used to. The tabs build as you go through the studies, and you're able to access those. One of the benefits of being right inside of SolidWorks is as you're designing your part, you're assigning materials to it. Those materials are actually shown in the parts tree, and I have green checks next to them, so the parts carry over for me. Next step, we just need to tell the software, how are we restraining the model? Basically, the free body diagram step. So simulation gives a very good understanding of what's happening. It shows visually through this animation of what the different constraints do. We do have a wide range of constraints that you can uh, utilize. I'm going to utilize a fixed hinge on these ends, and basically what that means is it can rotate, but it cannot translate along the axis. Once that has been assigned, what I'm going to do is apply my load. What you're going to see is we have a wide range of loads that we can apply as well. I'm going to utilize a force for this study, but we have the ability to do torques, pressures, gravity if you have a very large uh, structure and you're worried about self-weight, temperature, bearing loads, and so on. What I'm going to do is apply a load to this uh, cylindrical uh, face on the pin. What you notice is it's always normal to to start with, 
but I can specify a selected direction. In this, in this case, I'm going to be normal to the top plane. However, if you had some force vector, you could actually utilize a sketch. So instead of breaking it into its components, you can apply it along that sketch line. I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, my load so it kind of cleans up the display a little bit. Next step is we have to discretize or mesh the model. What you're going to see is we have a wide range of options for the mesh, for mesh refinement. I'm going to use the default mesh. Because SOLIDWORKS has the geometry right inside the system, it's already reading that. It understands the thicknesses, and it gives us that minimum of two uh, cells across a given thickness of, in an, an analyst rule of thumb in, within the structure. I'm going to go ahead and run the analysis, and what you're going to see is it actually runs very quickly. My results show up on the screen, and it looks like we're, we have a little bit of, of an issue. The, uh, the displacement of this with the stress plot is quite a bit. What you need to note is it's 452 times the deformation scale. So if we double click on this, it actually puts us into our, our plot options. Um, we can tr change this to a true scale, but I actually like the automatic. And the reason being is we can animate this. It's kind of a sanity check for the engineer. We need to know how is the structure being de deformed and did I apply my forces in the right direction? It's a very simple assembly. However, if it was a large assembly, you may not have the force or, or load applied in the proper direction. From there, I'm going to look at some of those chart options. The push pin, just like anything else inside of SOLIDWORKS, holds my property manager open. And I'm able to look at things other than just von Mises stress. I can look at the normal stress in the X. I look at the shear stress in the Y. We can also go in and turn on a max annotation. So what we see is it's pointing out the maximum uh, for, the, for the shear stress. I can turn that off if I need to. One of the other things that I can do is I can come in and I can apply the mesh over top of the model. This is actually very useful to make sure that I have a good mesh resolution in the areas of high stress. If we go back to our definition, we're going to stick with the von Mises stress. That's the most common uh, stress output that we, we see. And I'm going to switch this to a true scale just so we can see the actual displacement of this. We have a wide range of other plot tools. One of those that we've already seen is the animation. The other is section clipping. So when I was in industry, I did a lot of strain gauge testing. And you're applying the strain gauge at the outside of the part. So you're only really seeing what's happening at the, at the surface. And if I apply it higher in the arm, I really may not be capturing that high stress. What the section uh, clipping does within the model is it actually is more like an MRI into your model. You actually get to see how far is the stress penetrating into the arms uh, and you know whether we need to beef those up. If I saw a red area farther down into the arm, I know I need to do something about that. One of the other options that quickly allows you, especially in a larger model, to isolate those high stress areas, let's say everything above 8,000 PSI, is the ISO clipping. This very quickly hones in on those areas that are of concern, allows you to address those, those issues if you do have those. Another one of the options that we have is the probe tool. So very much like setting up a strain gauge in your model, we're actually able to put a probe wherever we need to. We get live feedback to that. We actually get an average and a max and a min. We can plot this out per nodal point. Or if we wanted to, we can actually do selected entities on the plot. So I'm going to pick up these three faces and I give it, I, gaining access to an update. We can actually save this out to Excel and manipulate that data however we need to. One of the other things that we gain access to is a displacement plot. Again, this is a, a deformed scale, but just like the stress, plot, I can go in, I can look at not only the resultant displacement, but the displacement in the Y. That's what we would be concerned with, because that's the direction of the pole. When I go ahead and select OK, we can see the displacement over here. The same plot tools and probe tools are all available. The other concern that we're seeing um, would be the factor of safety. If we go back to our stress plot, the maximum von Mises stress that we're seeing is 11,182. So we're well under our, our design constraint, but we still want to see what is the factor of safety. I can very easily add a factor of safety plot. The factor of safety is comparing the reported stress value to the yield of the material. And what we see here is a 3.2, that's my lowest factor of safety. So we're well above the two, uh, two value that we, we were requiring. So if we go back to our, our presentation here, what did we see? Uh, the requirements was a stress of 25, thousand PSI to keep below that. We saw the stress in the main arms of the system, and we saw that we kept the stress well below that at 11,000 PSI. We also met that factor safety uh, requirement. So we're going to go ahead and open up a poll question here. And so currently, how does your company 
uh, test and validate their designs? Do you utilize physical testing? Do you outsource finite element analysis currently? Or do you internally analyze it with a FEA package? Um, all three of these options are very valid and they all have a place in the design cycle. However, what I found in my personal experience is when you have an internal FEA tool, what you end up with is you're going to be utilizing it quite a bit and you're going to cut down on the physical testing. You're also going to cut down on the outsourcing of the analysis. So the results of the test do not quite uh, do not surprise me. You know, uh, a lot of the companies that I work with did a lot of physical testing. Um, I see that some of you have some internal uh, analysis tools as well. I encourage you to use those uh, to to their full extent. Hey Robert, can I ask you a question? Do you think mm -hmm. using simulation will remove physical testing? No, actually I do not, and I highly recommend not removing physical testing. What simulation allows you to do, and where I've used it, used it, is I had maybe six, seven designs that were proposed. I used the FEA to narrow down the design that I wanted to stick with, maybe two of those, and then we did physical testing on the prototypes of that design. So it doesn't remove it, but it's a tool to get you to less physical testing. Got it. Thank you. So we also have a giveaway uh, with the uh, webinar as well. This giveaway is a white paper from SOLIDWORKS and it talks about how to solve complex simulation problems uh, with, with the simulation software. Uh, if you have any questions, please enter those in the question uh, dialog box of the webinar. I will answer those questions at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the presentation. So what we want to do next is we want to look at reducing weight uh, out of this uh, out of this design. So again, we're going to keep those same static study goals, 25,000 PSI. We need to maintain a factor safety of two. And the weight on this is 36 pounds. You know, if we were lifting this to put it in place on the machine, it's quite a bit of, of mass to actually move. It's also a lot of shipping weight as well. So the cost of the shipping is going to go up. So how can we take that out of the design? So before we even move into a new study, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at one additional plot that we haven't looked at so far, and that's the design insight plot. The nice bit uh, or the nice feature of this uh, design insight plot is it actually shows where the design is actually absorbing the energy from the force into the structure. And what we see here is anything that is clear is where we technically could remove weight. We could remove it out of the arm. We definitely can remove it out of these solid pins at the end. You know, initially I thought that those were going to receive a lot of the load. They're not. So we're, that's where we're going to take the weight out of. Anything that is in blue is actually an area that is, is absorbing that, that load. When I select OK, we actually see that this plot stays on the screen. So we would be able to go into the SOLIDWORKS assembly because we're inside of SOLIDWORKS and just do an assembly cut to cut away that material and then simply retest it. For this example, I actually have a configuration that's already set up. So instead of starting a new study and going through that uh, setup process, which is still fairly quick and easy, I'm going to duplicate my study. And what I'm able to do is actually switch to a configuration that's already set up that is WR for weight reduction. So I'm going to simply rename my study. And what you're going to see is that setup, whether it's simple or, or complex, is automatically transferred into uh, the new study. So my materials carry over for my parts, all my contacts carry over, my fixed hinge restraint, my load. The one thing that does come up is it is requiring me to remesh. And you see that uh, warning or that, that message here. I'm going to simply create the mesh again. We're going to discretize the model. SOLIDWORKS again does a very good job of that. And then we're going to run the analysis. So what we're going to see is it runs again very fast. Our stress went up just a little bit by removing that amount of mass, but we're still at 11,200 PSI. If we look at our displacement, the displacement is very similar, and our factor of safety is still at 3.2, so we're still meeting all that design requirements. The other nice thing is if I look at my design insight plot, we see that the arms are still receiving or taking the bulk of that load. So it makes me feel very good with regards to the setup. So what did that do for us? If we evaluate this and we look at the mass of the system, we're down to 26 pounds. So we took roughly 10 pounds out of out of the design. So what did we see? We saw that we can remove the weight out of those pins. They're structurally still intact. We didn't need all of that mass. We actually reduced the weight by about 10 pounds. 
roughly 35 cents a pound for steel over a 2,000 production run. That's $749,000 just saved in raw material, not including the, the uh, cost savings in shipping, as well as we're providing a lighter component for our customer to, to basically mount in place or move around when it gets to them. So we're going to go ahead and look at another poll here. So if you currently do physical testing for your validation, how long does that testing take you? Is it less than a day, one to three days, uh, three days to a week or, or longer than a week? Uh, you know, when I was in industry, we did strain gauge testing. Um, I already mentioned that. And what I found was it was a very long process. Not only did you have to make the prototype, but you had to then do the testing. Is, is the strain gauge in the right location? So you moved it over an inch ran it again, move it over another inch, and ran it again. So there's a lot of uh, data compilation with that. So what we see here is uh, what I would expect to see and what I experienced. Um, some of you are less than a day, which is actually really good. Uh, others are longer than a week, and the, the majority of you are. So to reduce on that, if you can incorporate simulation, you're going from multiple prototypes in that long uh, physical testing down to a very short uh, time frame for that. We also have another giveaway. Uh, go ahead and uh, grab this one up as well. This is actually a blog from 3D Vision, and it talks about divergence and convergence in your simulation results. So if you do have a finite element analysis package now, or you're looking at getting it, this is a very good resource that explains some of the different meshing criteria and how you know you have a, a good result at the end of the day. So the next thing that I want to look at is the fatigue case study. So we've looked at applying the load. Are we meeting our design criteria? We, we definitely are. We took weight out of the system. We still are meeting our design criteria. However, we want to make sure that this is going to last. We don't want to put a product out there that's, that's only going to last for 10 uses and then it falls apart. It's not good for anybody. So we want to make sure that this survives at least 500,000 cycles and we're actually going to fully reverse the load. So just in case the customer is using this in a different application than what we specified it for. The fatigue study uh, is set up very similar to the static study. What you're going to see is the additional components that we have to add is a stress to number of cycles curve. This one was derived based on the ASME uh, steel curves uh, derivation from the elastic modulus. The lower the stress, the higher the number of cycles. The higher the stress, the lower number of cycles that it can receive. One of the benefits of simulations fatigue testing is you can do multiple loading criteria. So let's say not only are we pulling upwards on this, but we're also adding a lateral and a side load. And you can do different cycles for each one of those. The other difference between the static study is we're basically linking to an event. So I'm linking to my 5,000 pound load study. I'm giving it 500,000 cycles and I'm telling you it's, uh, the software that it's going to be a fully reverse load. So 5,000 pounds up and 5,000 pounds down. The other option that we have in here is a scale factor. That scale factor is uh, very important. It's a cumulative scale factor that takes into account certain things like corrosion. So this is sitting outside, takes into account rusting, oxidation, different items like that uh, that are not fully ac uh, accounted for else otherwise. From there, what we're going to do is run the study. Because we already solved the static study, the fatigue study runs very, very quickly. The two outputs that we gain uh, for this is the damage plot and what we're seeing and it actually makes me feel pretty good My lowest percent of damage is 50% my highest percentage of damage is 77 What that's telling me is in the high stress area. I'm not at hundred percent if I was at hundred percent I would only be lasting the 500,000 cycles if I look at my life plot. That's exactly what it's telling me 6,400 uh, or 6 6,049 uh, 649,000 cycles, mm -hmm. sorry about that, is, is my design life. So I'm meeting and exceeding my 500,000 by 150. So this gives me a very good feeling of my warranty claims for the part. It's going to last the customer. And we also took weight out of that system. So what did we see? We were, we were hoping to gain 500,000 cycles. We actually met and exceeded that by 150,000. And I feel really good uh, with regards to, to the setup and the, the output of this, uh, this uh, system. 
So we have one final poll question for you. So if you currently outsource the FEA analysis, how often does this occur? Is it every project, only when required, rarely, or when it when it's in the budget? So uh, from being an industry, what I've what I've found is we did outsource uh, finite element analysis as well, and it usually was when it was in the budget, or we rarely did it. We usually did the when in doubt, make it stout. We added more material into the design. We made it a little bit heavier. But what we see with simulation is you can actually take that out, be confident in your design, and move forward without having to use those outside resources. So what we're seeing is only when required and, and rarely, which, which seems to um, meet what I've seen from our customers in, in the industry that I've, I've been in. So what I want to uh, look at here is just the SOLIDWORKS simulation suite, the offering of our finite element analysis uh, product. What you see on the left-hand side, the simulation, the linear static, and the simulation standard, that is what we showed today. So the fatigue analysis and the manual kind of uh, reduction of weight. Also included in that package is our motion package. It's rigid body motion, so this is kinematics and dynamics. If you need something a little bit more, if you're concerned with natural frequency, uh, random uh, vibration in the system, drop testing it, you know, is it going to survive being dropped from 10 feet? Thermal analysis, different things like that. That's where the simulation professional comes in play. And motion professional, the event-based motion comes with that. If you have even more needs, if you're looking at rubbers, plastics, nonlinear materials, uh, composites, any random vibration uh, loading or taking a linear material beyond yield into the plasticity range, you're going to need the simulation premium option. And I'd be happy to talk with any of you with regards to the, the entire suite.